Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome back to part two of our little journey here in Fernbus. Uh, if you've missed part one, I'll link it in the video description. But basically, uh, we took a journey. We went from Bern down to Lucerne. Then we drove from there up to Zurich. And this is where we are right now. We've got a bunch of passengers to check in. And uh, if we have a look at the at the timetable or the stops we need to make, we need to get uh, we need to leave Zurich at 12.31. So we got here, well, quite a bit early, to be quite frank with you. But we need to take a 15 minute break somewhere along the line. And looking at this, the only place that we can stop is here. That's the only parking place en route. There's no parking places uh, in Zurich. And we need to pull into that little lay-by there. So we need to remember to do that. Unfortunately, there's no way to... You know, you can't, re you can't change the routing on the map like you can in something like Eurotruck. So I can't even... You know, do anything. What would be perfect is if I could if I could stick a marker here that said, you know, stop or just some kind of waypoint that it would track in the uh, sat nav. Uh, that would be great, but unfortunately, we don't have that option. Let's get the doors open. Uh, the bus is already lowered. So let's get. Oh, crikey, it's done. Whoa! That's the fastest rainstorm I think I've ever seen. Okay. So, anyway, luggage can go in here. Let's get everybody checked in. Now, we're expecting, if we just quickly have a look at this, we're expecting 10 people to get on board. Uh, so, let's have a chat with you. You're going to Basel. Your passenger name is Antonia. Antonia, you are not on the list, actually, Antonia. Unless I'm going blind, I can't see you on the list. No, I don't see you here. We're not expecting you. Where are you going? You're going to Basel. Okay. Yeah, that's very kind. Did you a favour, though. Hello, little old lady. You're travelling very light, or you already put your bag on, though. What's your name? Uh, Alexandra. Uh, Alexandra is here, so that's Thank fine. You, You're welcome. Um, twin brothers here. Looks like they maybe just got off the bus. Everybody's on their mobile Hello. these days. It's scary. Zurich down to Basel. Yusuf. Your Yusuf Freund. It's all good. Uh, Timo. Timo looks good. Uh, is this your missus? Uh, Annalena Dick. Annalena Dick. Right, well, you, you can come on board. Hello, here, my ticket. John Miller. I'm surprised nobody's ordering tickets. That's a scary looking haircut. You probably want to see your ticket. No, I just thought I'd, I'd let you get on the bus free. I, I trust you, you know. Uh, I think we're checking you in. Lilith! Lilith is good. What are you doing with your arm, pal? Uh, Heinrich Leonhard. Heinrich Leonhard. Uh, that's good. And, uh, let's see. Your name is Tommy. That's good. Uh, Yannick. Got one more to find. Oh, the ones we're expecting. Looks like nobody's... Nobody's winging it today. Everybody's sticking to the plan. Nobody's trying to get on board. Going to the wrong thing. Cool. Right. Um, that's everybody on board. Let's shut this up. There we go. It's a bit of rain texture. Okay. Looks very, very cosy. You could always move over a little bit if you wanted to and just give it a bit more room. But you appear to be breathing in unison, so uh, I guess maybe you know each other. I'm not sure. Right, grab its seat. Let's close the door. And uh, we'll put the wipers on. We shall lock all the stuff. Play the announcements. We shall then skip forward a minute, well, to a minute before departure. Uh, so we're now on 12.30. We're due to leave at 12.31. Let's make sure we've got the track aisle running correctly. Uh, I actually think it stopped raining, so we'll turn the wipers off. So I've played the announcement. Just got to wait another minute. Twelve thirty-one. Maybe we should quickly have a, a look around here. Well, look at. Oh wow, wow. 
Well, there's all kinds of things wrong here, isn't there? So first of all, we've got a guy sitting too close. He's got his hands and his feet and his legs and his knees all the way through the uh, the desk. Dear me. Maybe better off sticking down here. Um, I don't think there's anything else that we need to do. Although we do need to work out where we're going. So the plan is we're going to take a, what, a left turn out of here and then follow the highway round to the parking bay. Come on, must be 12.31 already. There we go. Right. Um, last thing I didn't do was... Raise the bus. Uh, comfort mode is on. Now, I think we get out this way. I'm not 100%, but... See, the weird thing is the sat-nav isn't showing me as being able to exit this way. But it seems like the natural thing to do. Wow, the sat nav doesn't even cor look at that. It doesn't even correct itself. It's like it it doesn't understand how to give me a route. That's pretty weird. Look at the line down the middle. Can you see that? I've just noticed like the anti-aliasing, the blaring of that line in the distance is pretty strange. I never actually spotted that before. Okay, I reckon we can go straight on here, you know, one second. Pretty certain we could go straight on here. Okay, so it looks like the sat-nav is not an adaptive one, it's just a fixed route. And then it, it doesn't, like, decide, oh yeah, you've, um, you've gone a different way, let me recalculate. It's a bit of a limitation. lights on there. We'll just have the side lights on. It's quite a sunny day. I really hope it catches up with the routing when we turn. Oh my god, this is where we find out I just made a massive mistake. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> it should have already updated, but I noticed when we crossed the line, went underneath our route, that's when it recalculated. Interesting. So I think what it they they know how to recalculate, but it's just not triggering it enough. That's what I'm thinking. Fair play, it got it right in the end. I've noticed a lot of people park on the pavements, though. Do you know, it's actually a better design, isn't it? If you think about it, if you was to make pavements that kind of width and then allow people to park on the pavements you could get rid of the car parks it's just like win-win I don't know if you was designing a city from scratch imagine what you'd do different like you look at London London was a city that just you know it's hundreds of years old it's just grown it's like a sprawling mess lots of little back streets like there's hardly and then you look at say I don't know a modern American city where it's kind of vertical and horizontal roads it's, it's so very different to London but if you was designing a city from scratch you could do all kinds of cool stuff to plan for traffic because back when cities were being built there was no real no real coordinate planning and there was no such thing as cars and buses and traffic so it's interesting how cities evolve just wait till we get flying cars eh God help us. <laughs> Everybody starts flying around in cars. God help us. Mind you, I reckon they won't be in charge. I reckon it'll all be um, automation then. It'll be automated pilots, probably. Although, I don't think it'll be our generation, because I don't think our generation would trust it. Like, no way am I getting in there with the computer flying it. Even though, like, 95% of a flight is actually done by a computer. With just a human monitoring. But there you go. Right, left turn. We're about to leave Zurich. Mindfernbus.de I wonder if that's the actual phone number. Leon to Karlsruhe, four times a day, 28 euros. That's not a bad price, you know. Can see why firm bus is pretty well flix bus is pretty popular. Hmm. 
Now you see, look, this is what I was saying to you in the previous video about if you don't park in the right place, you cannot see. Like, there's no way I could even see that light above me. They don't put a light over there for some reason. Has that guy got through on green? What the heck? Are we supposed to join this lane then? I get it. Alright, and then we'd have to move over, I guess. Okay, that makes sense. But we're not going that way, we're going this way. Uh, are those traffic lights not working? I don't think that light is working. Alright, he appears to be held. So in the last video, we had a couple of... We had a, a steering behaviour, which was when we went round a kind of a U-bend, and... Let's put the lights on. Went round a U-bend going up the Alps, I think it was, or something like that. And the... Oh, it's when we're coming down, actually. And the front of the bus hit the ground, and that it called out a steering misbehaviour. And then I believe there was one other... Well, a, a, a passenger made a comment when I went... I broke a speed limit. The speed limit changed from like 100 down to 60 in the tunnel, I think. And I didn't notice. So, the end scorecard, that so far should be the only thing. I've tried to stick as much as possible to everything else. We've got, you know, we've got all the Wi-Fi turned on, the kitchen turned on, the, the aircon's at the right temperature. Right, I need to take a break. I'm going to get a thrombosis. <sighs> you know, you can actually turn off the... Um, passenger comments. I'm, I'm actually seriously tempted. But this brings me back to a point I made in the part one video. There aren't enough rest areas. So I can pull over and turn the engine off, but I don't think it... It counts as having a brake, but it doesn't really count as having a brake because it wasn't in a specified area. So I don't think you get your bonus points. There's not much you can do about it until we get to the parking bay. 106 kilometers to Basel, ETA 1443. It's it's literally going to nag me. It's just going to completely nag me. Actually, I think I did turn off the passenger comments, but I didn't turn off the subtitles, so we can't hear them, but we can see their comments. <laughs> She's like, hmm. I think I'll just turn it off completely. I actually don't care for what they say because they're only just negative. Let's pick up to about 85, hit cruise control on that. And then turn it off again because we need to get off. Uh. Look at the green flowers, or whatever they are. Oh no, I guess I didn't turn it off. Yes, we're going to take a rest as soon as the game will allow me to. What I was about to say was look at the draw distance. cancel that indicator. The one thing I do like is that the roads are mostly, mostly wide enough. You know, in Eurotruck, particularly when you go back to the older parts of the map, like the UK and stuff, it's just so narrow, like, it's ridiculously hard to make a turn. But at least in this, like, like this now, this is like a connecting road, and it's easily big enough. Yes, I can make a rest, but not yet. Oh my god. I actually don't, I think we've got quite a way before that parking area, you know. If we have a quick look on the map. Yeah, we've only just got on here. They've been nagging me all through there. They're going to nag me all the way down this stretch. Oh boy. Okay, now the, the speed limit on the overhead says 70, but as you can see, on the sat-nav it still says 100, and the AI vehicles are still doing it as if it's 100. So, I, I don't quite understand that. It feels like they forgot to set the road at the right speed. There's not a lot we can do about these nagging people. Turn! There we go. 
I wonder if this is like a famous bridge. So I don't think there's any dynamic events. Which would be kind of nice. I've not seen any so far anyway. But, you know, in terms of the scenery, this DLC... Let's talk about that for a minute, because... I think the price of the DLC... The price of the map DLC, I think... And I'm going off memory now, is, is something like £20. Don't quote me on that. But I think it might be about £20, and I, and I bought it. So that's like, what, 20 $28? Something like that? It's a lot for a DLC. That's a lot for just, for a map. Two sections of map. 11 cities, 11 cities for 20 pounds. That kind of makes Eurotruck, when it comes out with the DLC, like pretty decent value, I'd say. But, you know, the quality's decent, but then you could say that the Eurotruck map is, is pretty decent quality as well, so. Well, that's all this game seems to be now is, I mean, the UI in the game is horrendous. It really is. It just reminds me of something. It reminds me of, like, the Amiga operating system or the Atari Gem operating system. Like, it really does look like a 90s interface. It's so incredibly basic and they've not changed it. It's just horrible bright green giant buttons. You know, the, the, the controls are pretty configurable, but it's not moved on. They've just not made any effort to move it on. There were so many things that they were talking about when this game came out they were going to do, and it kind of feels like not many of them have materialised. So I don't really know what's happened. It kind of feels like it's in a in a maintenance mode rather than a development mode. It feels like they, they, you know, decided to do something else rather than focus their efforts on this. It looks like we're finally coming up to the rest area, though. So let's get these passengers to shut up, finally. I kind of feel like they, done, they could have done so much more with this game. Right, now there should be a designated area where we can rest, like a, a green thing. We just need to find it. Yes, you shall have your cigarette shortly. If only the passengers would actually see that I'm pulling into a rest area. Don't need to refuel. Looks like car park on on the right, trucking. Possibly coaches on the left. It's got to be here somewhere. There it is. It's a blue. Set. There it is. Look, it's still nagging me. As I pull into a parking bay, it's still nagging me. It's just ridiculous. Can't they just get some context? Right, let's unlock the doors. Now what we need to do is we need to turn the engine off for this to work. So we'll do that. We'll turn all the lights off. And we shall now click take a break. Or rather, that button should be relabeled. Stop nagging. Okay, so we've taken a break. Now we're going to have to go around and count all the passengers. First thing we're going to do... Get the aircon system up and running. We'll shut the doors. And we shall count people. Right, John Miller. And the weird twins who obviously didn't leave or move. Nobody there. People like to hide, I've noticed. You always get to the end and you don't quite have the buddy. It's weird. Right. You there, sneaking behind that guy. Uh, let's see. Henna's cola. Do you? Okay, 
you two with your knees. That's like me when I fly Ryanair, that is. And there should be one other. You see? There's always one. There's always one that somehow, somehow manages to evade you. I swear the game plays tricks. Unbelievable. Where are you? Must be downstairs. What a scumbag. There. You see? Tara. Okay, what time are we due to leave? Checked. Uh, we are due to leave at 14... Oh, hang on. We're due to arrive at Basel at 14.43. Alright, in that case, let's lock up the door. Raise the bus. Parking brake is released. And off we go. So at the moment, in theory, we should get there on time. According to that, arrival 1443. So far, it's not been a bad little run. Right. Build the speed up to about 85. Should do it. It's actually hard. In Eurotruck, the... Um I prefer the external camera in Eurotruck to this, because in, exter in external camera in Eurotruck, it just does what it should do. Hello, what's going on here? It just reacts instantly to your mouse. With this, it has like a weird... Like if I move it left, it does that. If I move it right, it does that. And it's got this... As I let go of the mouse, it carries on moving like it's under some kind of inertia. And I don't like it. I prefer the, uh, the Eurotruck way of doing it. And also, when you like mouse wheel... The zooming is a bit... I don't know. It's just not quite as nice. I think they should just do what Eurotruck did. I've noticed on my sat-nav I've got a red, a red square down the bottom left which has gone away, but I have no idea what that meant. If anybody knows, let me know. Wait, is that traffic light? Oh, horrible kink in the road. Uh-oh. Speeding. I did not notice that. But it's okay, I have a lot of passengers that did. I'm guessing this is Basel. Can we zoom the map out? Yep. Blimey, that was a short run from the parking space. Okay, the audio's going really strange right now. That was really weird. Like the rumbling noise kind of mixed with everything else and it started to uh, make a weird noise. There you go. And now the end, you hear that, like the environmental sounds disappeared because it was playing like a rumbling audio. Okay, we're turning left. Right, so we've definitely had at least, at least two speeding infractions. Uh, steering misdemeanor. Swiss plate look. I think we'll get a good score out of it. Wow, the lights though. Crikey. What I want to know is, are lights really like this in, in uh, Swiss and, uh, Switzerland and Austria, where they're overhead but they're not at eye level? Because I... Like, that one's at eye level, but that doesn't apply to this lane. So if you're a coach driver, how the heck do you see where you're going? streets, wow. It's good scenery though, it's quite detailed. I 
Oh yeah, and Track IR. I forgot. I don't think Track IR, when I played it a while back, I don't think it had Track IR support. I think that came a bit later. So having that support is actually really cool. Right, this is the destination. I'm just trying to scout. There it is. You can see the, uh, the parking spot. No other coaches, no other buses, no other people. The only people that will be here are the ones that teleport off our bus in a minute. The railway should take a leaf out of this book. Wow. Is it because I got here early or something? Probably is. So, like, salty, aren't they? Come on. Come on, you salty lot. Wow. Way to spawn. <laughs> you spawned t-shirt first. That was impressive. Grab your stuff. See now, I don't know. There's not enough models here. They're all messing about with the phones. They're all doing weird head shaky things. The bags teleport. They teleport. And then they stand here. They don't move. I mean, even Omsu, built by two guys, the passengers got on and off and walked around wasn't perfect but you know that is such a cop out let's have a look let's have a look at how we did so we shall log out and it's going to give us a report let's see checked in sold invalid tickets we didn't have any so that's fine otherwise we've got plus points on this got all the passengers we had a, a scheduled arrival and departure interesting Interesting. Did I forget to click start ride on something? I must have done. On schedule, resting quality 0%. Now that makes no sense to me. That's what happens when you don't use a parking space normally, but we did use a parking space and we lost 50 points. That's pretty harsh. I can only put that down to the fact that it took a long time to find a parking area, but that's not my fault. We pulled up and they got arrested. That's, that's ridiculous. Anyway... Restroom clearance and all that good stuff. Aircon, 97%. I don't get that either because we that was on 100% of the time that was on. So that's rubbish as well. Uh, announcement played, we did. Maintain driving time, 0%. Uh, what? <laughs> Properties damage, none. No accidents, no radar control. Driving behavior, driven on the road 60% of the time. Now... I actually take issue with that. How can I possibly have been driving on the road 60% of the time? And if I wasn't on the road 40% of the time, why did I only lose four points? It just seemed broken. There's a steering misbehavior. Braking misbehavior, none. So, yeah. How very odd. Well, that's it for this Fernbus video. That was a two-part video. That was a nice drive that we had in the new uh, Austria-Switzerland DLC. Let me know if you'd like me to do more firm bus or not. Maybe chucking some ideas for the kind of thing I could do possibly. I don't know. Just let, let me know your thoughts on that. Other than that, take care guys. Happy busing.